Can we start now? Yes. Here we have a patient yes. who had undergone mitral valve replacement five years back because of mitral stenosis. Yes. Now he has come with acute onset of palpitation to yes. emergency department. Yes. How can we proceed this case? Sir, firstly, since the vitals are already being monitored, I would like to know the oxygen saturation of the patient. Oxygen saturation is 92 uh, now at present. Without any, we are not saturated any oxygen. Okay, at room sir. air, it is 91. Since uh, oxygen saturation is low, I would like to patient uh, to shift into a uh, propped up position and give uh, high flow oxygen through nasal mask. Okay, please start on uh, oxygen with uh, nasal mask. Okay, so that is started. Four liters. Four liters started. Yes. Sir. Can proceed. That okay, sir. That and next, I would like to connect the IV lens to the patient for for the drug, drug administration. Which gauge you want to start? Sir, peripheral. Which gauge? You have to start 18 gauge. Needed. Okay. So please start 18 gauge uh, yes, 18 IV line. 18 gauge IV cannula inserted. Okay. So that is given. Okay, sir. Next is what? Sir, now I would like to send some lab reports uh, for the further investigations. You want to know more about the patient details? Yes. We are connected. Yes. What are the things you want to know? Sir, I would like to uh, connect the patient to the ECG and monitor the So we are connected day. to monitor. Yes, sir. We have a rhythm uh, at present on the monitor. You can analyze the rhythm. Okay, sir. sir, there is no complete P wave and there is just a wavy baseline okay. with the irregular uh, QRS complex, okay. RR intervals with the narrow QRS complex. So, this patient might be under narrow QRS complex and irregular. So, you can see here narrow QRS complex, irregular uh, wavy baseline, yes, uh, mostly narrow QRS complex, yes, which is irregular, mostly it is atrial fibrillation. Yes, sir. And uh, his saturation has improved after your oxygen, it yes, is sir. 96 now. Yes. Anything else you want to see in the monitor? Sir, patient's BP is normal and pulse is high. BP is 122 by 82 yes, and pulse is still 165. We have put an IV yes, and sir. we have started oxygen. Yes. Sir, uh, I would like to send the lab reports. What are things you want to take? Sir, uh, I would send cardiac enzymes. Okay. And then uh, uh, B natriuretic peptide. So, you please send uh, uh, yes, tro CKMB, troponin T, yes, BNP. Yes, cardiac enzymes, BNP. And I would like to uh, ask for echo also. You have to look for, you have to ask for an echo. It may take some time. Okay. For okay. Sir, can I see a uh, patient's x-ray report? X-ray report is yes. there. Put the x-ray. Okay, x-ray has come. Uh, sir, can I, come I can the see the dilation of heart, dilatation so, of heart and uh, heart border has been narrowed, like it's right. Okay. So, there <laughs> might be a mitral stenosis. Okay. So, he's having cardiomegaly. And pulmonary bay is full, yes, that sir. shows pulmonary edema yes. and or pulmonary hypertension, rather pul uh, not pulmonary edema, pulmonary hypertension and uh, otherwise it's okay. Cardiomegaly is there, left border of the heart is uh, straightened, uh, pulmonary bay is full, even right ventricular enlargement is there. Yes. Okay. So, you add pulmonary, pulmonary uh, mitral stenosis and pulmonary hypertension, then later uh, mitral valve was replaced. Now, he has come with a palpitation. Yes, now sir. you can see the rhythm is uh, like irregular. Irregular. Heart rate is very high. Sir, mm -hmm. for knowing the stability of the patient, I would like to ask some questions. Like, yes. sir, is the patient uh, has any signs of hypotension, ischemia? Uh, BP is normal. There yes, is no sir. chest pain. There is no ischemia. There is no. There is no pain. signs of uh, shock. G uh, is uh, BP is normal. Yes, sir. Pulse rate is higher. Yes, sir. And patient has no uh, uh, acute cardiac failure. At, at present, so, it yeah, is not. not the BNP is normal. Yes, sir. So, uh, we we'll consider pa patient as a stable patient. Yes. Yes, sir. It's a now, stable tachycardia now. Yeah. And since the BP is normal uh, and rate is high, we would like to start the patient on amidoron, sir. We can tell the dose how sir, to give. Amidoron, uh, we can give 150 mg, 150 ml over 10 minutes okay. at the rate of 10 ml per minute. Okay. Can you start amidoron? Yes, 150 mg amidoron over 10 minutes given. Started. Yes, it may yes. take some time to settle the issue. We will yes, wait for that. Yes. Anything else you want to uh, give for the patient? Uh, Amidron is started. Yes. So, anything else you want to give or you, we have to wait for the… So, we will wait, wait uh, for the wait report. For the okay. report. Okay. So, we can discuss the case. Okay, now, sir. you understood 
how to analyze the rhythm that is very important according to acls you have to first of all you have to see what is the rhythm it's a tachycardia you, you can see here heart rate was very high 165 and next one is analyze the rhythm what you have seen is a narrow complex tachycardia second thing is this narrow complex they are coming regularly or not so it's a narrow complex it's a irregular narrow complex rhythm so the most important diagnosis is atrial, atrial fibrillation, fibrillation. This patient had mitral stenosis and atrial fibrillation is known in that type of patients because there is a right atrial enlargement. Okay, sorry, left atrial enlargement. So that's why he is having atrial fibrillation. Now the rate is very high and patient is stable. That is very important. Yes. So when you uh, follow the tachycardia algorithm, you can see whether the patient is stable or, or unstable. Stable. stable means you can use drugs. Yes, unstable means what is the uh, treatment? Electrocardioversion. So if we have a cardioversion here, yes, mission here, defibrillator is there. If the patient goes to hypotension, shock, low GCS, pulmonary edema, we have to use this machine yes. to give shock. At present, patient is uh, uh, hemodynamically stable, so we have to go for drugs. You yes. have started amiodarone. So you can classify these type of drugs into ma three major groups. One, if the patient is having normal or slightly higher BP. Yes. Or second thing is patient is having uh, normal BP. Third thing is hypotension. Hypotension we have already discussed. We cannot use all these drugs. We have to go for electrocardioversion uh, electro with a defibrillator. Second thing is like this patient's BP is 120 by 80. Okay, suppose we give beta blocker or calcium channel blocker. What happens? The BP can slightly go down. Okay, it may control the heart rate, but it can BP can go down. So. Now, we can still use it because this tachycardia itself can produce hypotension. So, sometimes what happens when you give beta blocker, BP increases. But since you are not an expert, better to go for amiodarone that will not produce any hypotension. It takes some time to control the heart rate, now it is coming down. Okay. And if the BP is very high, then what you do? BP is high and yes, patient is uh, high. You start on metoprolol. You or, can start on metoprolol yeah. or dysbiasm, verapamil. Now we analyze wha what is the action of all these drugs. Okay. Yes. Suppose you give beta blocker, what is the action? So beta blocker uh, decrease the conduction from SA node to AV node, okay. decreasing the heart rate. Okay. So and beta blocker can uh, decrease the heart rate. Yes, that sir. is the most important thing. Okay. Uh, is there any side effect for beta blocker? Yes, sir. If the patient has reactive uh, airway diseases or uh, asthma, it okay. can precipitate because okay. of vasoconstriction. If there is a reactive airway disease, there is a chance of aggravating that yes, disease. Sir. Okay. Suppose the patient is having a cardiac failure yes, and sir. atrial fibrillation, yes, sir. these drugs may not be very safe. Yes, okay. And same like that, calcium channel blockers like diltiazem, verapamil, they are also not very safe in patients who is having cardiac, cardiac failure. Now, it, suppose this is a regular tachycardia, SVT, regular yes. narrow complex tachycardia. Before beta blocker or calcium channel blocker, you have two more options. What yes, are the two more vagal options? Vagal maneuver, we should okay, do vagal You can maneuver. try for vagal maneuver, that yes, can uh, get stimulated, vagus nerve can be stimulated and that, that itself can control the heart rate. Yes. And another drug is? Adenosine. Adenosine. Adenosine is a drug of choice in SVT not in atrial fibrillation. How do you give adenosine? So, first we have to check if the patient has any asthma or something. Okay. Because so, that is very important yeah. because adenosine can produce asthma. asthmatic episodes. Yeah. Okay. Then you will give adenosine. Adenosine has very short half-life. It, its half-life varies from 0 0.6 to 10 seconds. Okay. So, you have to flush adenosine as, as quick as possible for its action. So, uh, you will arrange the rapid flush, okay. 2 ml saline okay. and first 6 ml, if peripheral line is there, you will give 6 mg of adenosine in mm. near settings. Okay. If it's in ICU, we have central line. Okay. So, there will give 3 mg of adenosine. Okay. So, uh, since we are in ER settings, uh, we have peripheral line, we will connect uh, 6 mg of adenosine followed immediately by 2 ml of rapid flush and we will lift the hand for okay. rapid. Uh, okay. So, that is very important. Since adenosine has got very short half-life, you inject the adenosine immediately flush it with some amount of fluid, then lift the arm. That is very important. So, that has to be done for adenosine. But in atrial fibrillation, that drugs are uh, not indicated. No, right. Now, you can, you, we suppose the BP is high, we are starting beta blocker or calcium channel blocker. If there is cardiac failure, there is a possibility of hypotension in that patient. Okay. But the problem is most of the patients, the atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular rate itself can produce hypotension. Why they produce hypotension? Because perfusion will be decreased. It's like not perfusion. Sir, endostolic volume of okay. ventricle. When the rate decrease. is very high and atrium is not contracting properly, endostolic volume, volume will can come down that reduces the ejection. ejection. Okay. So, that itself can reduce the BP. So, when you are giving a drug like beta blocker or calcium channel blocker, there is a possibility of uh, like heart rate can come down, BP can increase. 
but rarely sometimes patient can have hypotension also here we have used amiodron okay yes. how amiodron is different from beta blocker calcium channel blocker sir a beta blocker beta blocker calcium channel blocker sir rate control okay but amiodron usually controls the rhythm it okay. is a, a class 3 uh, anti arrhythmic agent okay uh, which acts on potassium channels okay so it blocks the potassium channels and okay. cause hyperpolarization okay so uh, because of hyperpolarization the rate will be decreased sir. okay so both both uh, uh, actions are there there is an action uh, that reduces the rate there is another action that can reduce the rhythm. Uh, improve the rhythm. rhythm also okay so here what has happened rate has come down rhythm is still like that only yes. okay now what else you can do suppose you have a patient who is having controlled ventricular rate here the patient yes. is having atrial fibrillation but the rate is controlled okay so your primary problem is settled that uh, hypertension can produce sometimes uh, uh, sorry high high, high uh, like heart rate can sometimes produce hypotension yes. so that primary problem is settled heart rate has come down but secondary problem is still persisting you have a Uh, 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 irregular rhythm, rhythm. Irregular yeah. rhythm. What is the problem in atrium? This irregular rhythm. What it can produce inside the atrium? Sir, uh, because of irregular rhythm, there will be stasis of blood okay. inside the atria, and stasis and atria is beating at higher rate irregularly. Okay. So there is a turbulence. Okay. When stasis and turbulence are together, there might be fo- a formation of clots. Okay. So inside atrium, clots can be formed. So now that will be the problem for this patient. Yes. How do you manage this? Sir, uh, for this. Uh, we we will we'll give the patient uh, anticoagulants based okay. on the chart score there okay. is some el- evaluation of okay. uh, so patient. depending on the age sex uh, pre yes, pre existing yes. diseases you can calculate chart yeah. score can be yes, calculated sir. but as an mbbs student you may not uh, by heart all these things uh, your uh, smartphone will have all these uh, parameters yes, and you can calculate the score okay, whatever sir. it is here this patient has come with atrial fibrillation yes. what do you do sir a low molecular weight heparin and okay. warfarin we can do. okay so this patient may be already on warfarin that okay, is a problem sir. already yes, may be on warfarin so this patient is having valve replacement therapy is oh, already yes, done so the, the patient may be on warfarin suppose the patient is a new patient you have to start heparin or low molecular weight heparin yes, along with warfarin if you are starting some other like uh, drug like uh, rivaroxaban that may not be required because warfarin takes some time to act so immediately you see the patient you have to start heparin okay heparin or low molecular weight heparin yes. what is the basic difference between heparin and low molecular weight heparin is both are same no sir they are not same okay they are in same category but there are some differences what are the differences clinical difference i am not asking there faster onset uh, low molecular weight heparin has faster onset, onset and all almost similar but the problem is heparin when you are starting you have to monitor the aptt yes. when you are starting well, low molecular weight heparin no need to monitor the aptt and heparin can produce heparin induced thrombocytopenia it's a rare incident a rare uh, condition but low molecular weight heparin the incidence is very very rare yes. okay so the main thing is monitoring suppose the pa- you are treating a patient with uh, like you can uh, like opd basis low molecular weight heparin will be a better choice okay so here we can start heparin or low molecular weight heparin along with you have to start warfarin okay. okay warfarin can be continued for longer periods yes. okay so there are different type of drugs warfarin is there acitrom is there your yes. uh, what what you do rivaroxaban is there dabigatran is there what is the basic difference between warfarin to other drugs so warfarin is a uh, uh, warfarin has many drug interactions okay, so all that. the drug inducers and inhibitors will okay. act against yeah. the warfarin okay. so that is the most important problem warfarin faces if warfarin is a very cheap drug the cost is very much low but whereas uh, rivaroxaban and other drugs are very costly because. but warfarin the main problem is whenever you start a newer drug in in a patient who is a, who is already on warfarin you have to check the drug interaction some drugs can increase the warfarin uh, absorption some drugs can reduce the warfarin absorption yes. like uh, some patients on warfarin if you start a newer drugs suddenly you can see the Yeah, PTNR toxicity, will be yeah. uh, toxicity. Toxic. PTNR will be uh, very high. Yes. Okay, some patients it can lower down. Okay, here we have a patient with valve replacement. Yes. Okay, valve replacement is done. What all things you look in a patient who is already undergone valve replacement? Sir, uh, since the patient is undergone valve replacement already, uh, they must have replaced with the metallic valve. Okay. So you will hear for the metallic sounds. Okay. If you don't heartbeat. hear, what are the clinical problems? Sir, if can... you don't hear, then there might be uh, valvular dysfunction. Okay. So, so most patient... important is valvular yes. dysfunction. It can be due to a mechanical problem. It can be due to a infection, like yes. infective endocarditis infective. can uh, stop the valve 
or a mechanical problem itself can stop the valve. Yes. This is called a stuck valve. Stuck yes. valve problem is patient will be unstable. Yes. Patient can have pulmonary edema, breathing difficulty, so many things can happen. Acutely, they can present to emergency room with acute breathlessness. The treatment is replacement or repair of the valve. Okay, so that has to be done for that patient. Here, the patient is having only uh, fast ventricular rate. Your aim is to control the rate, that's all. We cannot sometimes control the uh, uh, rhythm at all. Okay, if the patient is having hypotension, shock, hypotension or (coughs) any signs of uh, unstability, then you have to use this... uh, uh, Defibrillator. How do you yes. def, uh, give DC cardioversion? Sir, uh, first demonstrate how yes, to give DC cardioversion for this patient. He, um, he will demonstrate. Yes, you can tell uh, him. Could you what please to turn do. on the machine? Okay. So we are turning on the machine. Yes. Okay. Then. And then uh, you should charge the sir uh, during defibrillation okay. when the car- person has cardiac failure. Okay. Uh, you can charge it anywhere between 100 to 200. Okay. Maximum so, is better, so you can okay. charge it till till 200. So depending on the clinical scenario, the joules yeah. are different. Joules are like different. SVT, it's yeah. different. Atrial fibrillation, it is different. So, VT, it is different. So we are yes. not talking about that now. So he has charged uh, 150 here. Now, yes, now what is the next thing? He has put the Prop on 150. Yes. Now, what is the next thing? Now you have to take the pads off. Take the pads take off. Take the pads off. Okay, then. Sir, left sided pad is placed on. Uh, now you have to see one more thing. There is a synchronized button. Yes, here. yes. See, synchronized button is there. Some condition like cardio version, you have to synchronize. Defibrillation, no need to synchronize. Synchronize means that will pick up the first positive deflection in ECG, that will deliver the shock. Uh, the virus in defibrillator, you just press it, it will be delivered. So, here you are synchronizing the shock, so it will deliver on the R wave. Yes. Okay. Now, you have to keep the paddles. Yes. Where all you Left can keep? pad is placed on under the clavicle near the sternum. Okay. So, here we are discussing everything. Actually, we no need to do anything for this patient. Okay, so the pads are kept. uh, What else you have to do? You you should not touch the patient. So nobody should touch the patient. uh, Crash card should be ready. So crash card will be ready. uh, You should take consent. Okay, you have to take a consent. consent. We have to give heparin before that. And you should give, uh, you can can give uh, mild analgesic. Okay, we have to sedate the patient. Sedate the patient. and then uh, one one should be placed on the clavicle. It is already under the clavicle. Next is what? Very important thing. Charge. You charge it already charged. Uh, then shock. Shock. Then what? Then monitor the. Huh? After shock, what is the next thing? Hold it for, uh, hold hold it for, for some more time. Why yes. it is like that? Because that paddle will be checking for the first positive deflection. It will deliver shock only after some few minutes, a few seconds. Sorry, not few minutes, few seconds. But after delivering the shock, you have to take the paddle. Okay. Otherwise, what will happen? When you take the paddle, it will not pick up the first yeah. positive deflection. The shock might not have. Delivered. Yes. Okay. So that is very important. Whenever you are doing deep, uh, uh, like uh, cardio version, you have to keep it for some more time. Yes. That is very important. Okay. Suppose the patient does not improve. What happens to the heart after giving shock? So I am giving shock now. Yes, what happens to the heart? Stimulation. It is not stimulation. Yes, it like, arrests. It yeah, is yes. complete standstill. Yes. Then after that, you may get a normal sinus rhythm. Oh. That's all. Okay. Sometimes what will happen? The same rhythm will continue even yes, after sir. that. Then what you do? You increase the joules yeah. and give another shock. Okay. So for every disease, there is a, a guideline. You have a, a certain number of uh, joules yes. you have to press and put, give the shock. Yes. But once you give given the initial shock, if the patient does not improve, you have to give repeated shock sometimes. Then you have to increase the joules slowly. Okay. So that has to be done. So what is the problem of this shock? What happens to the uh, patient after that? Can it reverse completely? Or it can go back to normal. It can go back to normal. So, if uh, we are not treating the problem there, suppose the patient is having severe hypoxemia. Hypoxemia itself can produce atrial yeah. fibrillation. You are not treating the hypoxemia, you have given shock. Patient will come back to normal rhythm. And since you are not treating the hypoxemia, patient can go back to the previous state. Okay, so that is also very important. Yes. So, we have to correct all these things. So, what we have done is kept the patient in uh, propped up position. We don't know whether pulmonary edema is there or not. We are uh, started oxygen because hypoxemia is there. Hypoxemia is one of the important conditions which can produce atrial arrhythmias. So, hypoxemia was corrected. Then you have put an IV line. You have seen the patient's monitor. 
heart rate was very high bp was stable uh, there was no desaturation after that patient's gcs is normal patient is not having hypotension that's why you have started amiodarone okay suppose the bp is very high we had to start either beta blocker calcium channel yes, blocker uh, or digoxin Detox. digoxin is what what is the action sir, of digoxin where uh, else you where, where we can cardiac use? failure with uh, atrial fibrillation is the only indication okay. for digoxin so normally when the when you know that already cardiac failure is there and atrial fibrillation is yes. there no other drug can act like digoxin here okay so digoxin is indicated only in that condition why digoxin is not indicated in other conditions sir digoxin has a high uh, okay. toxicity so it is a pro arrhythmic yeah, drug pro- you should talk like a medical student yes. it's a pro arrhythmic drug same yeah. time it's an anti arrhythmic drug it can be a pro arrhythmic drug yeah. also okay so uh, when you are using digoxin if there is an electrolyte imbalance like uh, hypokalemia or hypomagnesemia it, that itself can trigger the arrhythmia and patient can go to arrhythmia any time that's why yes. many of this condition nowadays we are not using digoxin digoxin is only indicated in atrial fibrillation with, with cardiac, cardiac failure. failure okay now can we discharge the patient so now the patient's uh, rate has settled rhythm is still atrial fibrillation yes. we have started uh, you have started heparin we have started warfarin now depending on your hospital you can select any drug for preventing emboli- embolization yes. okay sorry embolism now can we discharge the patient no sir first we have to treat underlying cause now we have to treat the underlying cause what may be that underlying cause here so in this patient underlying cause is the mitral stenosis mitral stenosis with the right right Car- ventricular right. dilatation uh, right atrial and sorry left atrial and uh, right ventricular dilatation. dilatation that may be the reason for all these things can we treat all these things in this patient because already mitral stenosis was for a long time he has yes. developed uh, so much complication it may not recover back to normal yes. what we can do is we can only control the rate and to prevent the embolism we can we can start uh, drugs Antico- like uh, anticoagulation acitrom or warfarin or any other newer drugs can be continued so when the patient we are discharging the patient what are the advices we give for this patient we Sir, have to discharge the patient anticoagulation therapy should be again continued for 6 more days uh, even after you are start. telling about heparin heparin okay yeah. then warfarin has to be continued when yes, the sir. patient is on warfarin you have to give some advices yes, sir, or other drugs like okay whenever he is he uh, started on any other drugs the doctor has to check the interaction with warfarin okay. that is very very important in this type of patients and what do you monitor for this patient when you are starting warfarin what will yes, you monitor aptt aptt is for heparin heparin yes. here INR. INR. Here INR has to be started. So different scenarios you have different INRs like uh, pulmonary embolism there is an INR, yes. deep vein thrombosis there is an yes. INR, replaced valve there is an INR. Yes, so here it will be One slightly three. higher. One, One to three. three. Uh, mo- it is slightly more than three. Three to four maybe like target INR in a yes. replaced mitral valve. Okay. Suppose replacement is not done then it is a lower dose. Replacement is done then it is a higher dose. If the patient is having high degree fever and you are seeing the valve is not working properly yes. what else you suspect infective endocarditis infective endocarditis so what you do in infective endocarditis how do you manage this case other than what we have discussed so far you are suspecting infective yes. endocarditis because patient is having high degree fever yes. splenomegaly is there you are not hearing the valve sounds properly on echo there are some vegetations what is a second line of management in this patient antibiotics what antibiotic you start what antibiotic Based, mostly it's because of streptococcus. You have to take sir. culture. How do you take yeah. culture in this patient? How many samples you have to take? How you take? That is very important. Infective endocarditis means there is a foci in your heart. Infective foci is there. That will be continuously spreading the bacteria throughout your body. Okay. So, you have to take samples from different areas. So, one sample from the right upper limb one will maybe from the left upper limb one maybe from the uh, like uh, Rings, uh, uh, some like uh, what is it high high vc central line yes. so you have to take from the uh, sample from different areas at different site so you want to document that this is not a contamination you want to document that it's a continuous process okay if three samples are taken suppose two samples have same organism then that is the diagnosis suppose one sample is positive other two samples are negative okay. then it can be contamination. contamination okay now basically how do you treat in emergency room this in suspected infective endocarditis what drugs you start penicillin penicillin means 
penicillin G will so basically what you should understand is this can be gram positive or gram negative gram. we don't know what it is okay so basically you have to start one drug to cover gram positive one drug to cover gram negative for example vancomycin with sept reaction yes. you start vancomycin what is the action of vancomycin how do uh, what what is spectrum of that antibiotic vancomycin vancomycin is a broad spectrum it is not broad spectrum it is only narrow spectrum oh, yes. it is gram positive okay and mrsa mrsa is a gram positive okay methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus okay so vancomycin predominantly covers gram positive including mrsa whereas ceftriaxone it covers Post- predominantly gram negative gram- so when you don't know what is a organism when you have a transplanted valve with suspected inf- infective endocarditis or you, even if it is not transplanted then you have to start one drug for gram positive one drug for gram negative is mitral stenosis is uh, uh, like uh, prone for infective endocarditis mitral stenosis i am not talking about replaced valve yes. there are some lesions in your in the heart which are resistant to infective endocarditis what are the two important diseases which in that infective endocarditis is not very common two diseases one is mitral stenosis other one is asd yes. because both are not not turbulent diseases high turbulence is not there whereas mr or vsd is high turbulent diseases in mitral stenosis it's a low turbulent disease asd also low turbulent disease that also you should keep in mind if there is an infective endocarditis you have to start a, uh, antibiotic should we start antibiotic here is it needed sir no sir it is not required because we are not suspecting infective yeah. endocarditis we have done an echo that doesn't show infective endocarditis which other echo will tell you that uh, valve a problem better than trans thoracic echo is there any other mode of uh, modality in echo which can diagnose trans esophageal echo t so ideally we have to do a t to make a diagnose because suddenly this patient has gone to atrial fibrillation without any reason we have to find out what is the reason yes. okay so you understood how to manage a, a, a condition like uh, uh, fast ventricular rate which is irregular it is narrow complex it's atrial fibrillation yes. okay thank you thank you sir